This little lecture is about the different regions uh, in internal flow. So just like you uh, probably learned in fluids, uh, uh, an internal flow has an entrance region and a fully developed flow. Uh, and so those depend upon the growth of the boundary layer. And so if we look in uh, this image over here, you can see that that boundary layer is going to grow uh, over time, uh, just like if it was crossing over a flat plate. Uh, and eventually that's going to meet in the middle, whether that is this is represent a res representation of a pipe or of two flat plates, uh, you're still going to get a point where those boundary layers from opposing sides of that internal flow meet with each other. After those boundary layers meet with each other, we call that fully developed flow. Okay. Uh, in a lot of flows, we don't need to pay that much attention to this. If I have a 50 meter flow uh, and my entrance region is only 50 centimeters, then I can sort of ignore uh, the effects of this entrance region uh, because they're going to be relatively insignificant. But uh, as you might guess, your uh, local H is high near this entrance region uh, if you have a heated pipe surface or a constant flux. Uh, and so it might make a difference if you have a, a shorter pipe. It may change uh, some of the heat transfer uh, variables for your flow. So how do you tell if your entrance region is uh, big or small? Uh, well, just like in hydrodynamic uh, entrance regions, we have a definition that is uh, based on the Reynolds number. Uh, that is for laminar flow. Okay, and so for laminar flow, we have the same definition for the thermal uh, entrance region, except we add in the parental number. And so if you have a larger parental number, um, that means that you don't have a lot of thermal diffusion. Uh, and so your uh, entrance region is going to be larger in that case. If I had like a liquid metal or something and my parental number was really low, uh, then my entrance region would be really short because that thermal energy would uh, diffuse towards the center of my flow uh, very quickly. Turbulent flow is much more consistent. Uh, it is uh, just based on uh, the di dynamiter, diameter rather, uh, of our uh, internal flow. And so you can see here this X, that's the entrance length region. Uh, and so if X over D is equal to 10, then X is equal to 10 D. Uh, and that means that in turbulent flow, your entrance region is always 10 times the di diameter of your, uh, of your flow. Uh, in fully developed flow, when we talk about uh, hydrodynamic uh, fully developed flow, we can say, oh, once we're in fully developed flow, our velocity profile stays the same. We can't say the same thing uh, when we talk about uh, thermal boundary layers because we still have thermal energy entering or leaving the system. Uh, and so our temperature profile is going to change uh, as we develop. So what, what stays the same as we um, move into fully developed flow uh, in thermally speaking? The, sh the mathematical shape of our temperature profile. So here you can see I still at this point in my flow, I still have a good part of the flow that is at T infinity uh, and only the edges have started to heat up. Once I reach my fully developed flow, I get a nice, uh, for a constant flux, uh, a nice parabolic shape to my temperature profile. That shape stays the same as my flow develops. My overall temperature goes up. You can see I'm farther away from T naught as I develop here because I'm constantly adding a flux. I'm adding uh, thermal energy to that flow as as we move along. Um, the temperature, if I have a, a constant surface temperature, it's a little more complicated because my shape doesn't stay exactly the same, but the mathematical function that defines that shape stays the same. And so you can see here, right when I'm in fully developed flow, I have a, a particular shape here that's a lot more complex than with constant flux. Um, as we move down the flow, my temperature at my surfaces is, is going to stay about the same, uh, and the flow, the temperature in the middle is going to uh, is going to increase. But the shape here, this is like a sort of a, 
a shortened version of the same profile. Uh, in other words, that function still describes my temperature profile, but it's uh, it's been shortened uh, as you move further into the flow. Eventually, with a constant uh, um, surface temperature, my temperature profile is almost going to be even, right? Because it's going to heat up that whole flow until it reaches uh, T surface. So that's sort of uh, what happens as your, you develop uh, your temper or your flow. Uh, and in both of these cases, whether we're talking about uh, constant flux or constant temperature, uh, our H stays the same. And you can see that here with our definition of H, um, we're going to have a dt dx that's proportional to the difference between the local mean temperature and the local surface temperature. And so if this guy is proportional to this guy, and our k is going to be uh, relatively constant uh, in most cases here, uh, then H is going to be constant too. Uh, and that way we can uh, say that uh, at any given point in either of these flows, a uh, constant flux or a constant surface temperature, uh, that Q, uh, that flux from the sides, is going to be proportional to the difference between the mean local temperature and the, and the surface local temperature, because H here uh, is a constant value. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, about fully developed flow um, and uh, and the entrance region uh, for thermal uh, internal flows.